or Ustad Mahmoud is requesting you to share a few points of benefit from these verses that we've read um, so far. More particularly in regards to the story that was recited right at the beginning in regards to the true sons of Adam alayhi salatu who were Habib and Qatib. Okay? Um, I'm pretty sure everyone would be familiar with this story, right? Um, everyone from childhood, they told this story. And uh, we don't want to go too much into the story, but the purpose of a story in the Quran, um, let's mention that, and then following that, we're just going through some of the lessons as well. The Quran in itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not sent it down as a book which conveys stories. He has not sent the Quran down to tell us about stories of the past or relate to us historical points. But rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he pinpoints very particular reasons why he has sent down or related to us certain stories of the past in the Quran, even though it's not a storytelling book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says right at the end of Surah to Yusuf, which is a surah which comprises of an entire story in itself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions right at the end of that surah as to why he has mentioned that story or why he mentions stories at all in the entire Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ Certainly within their stories, Ibra, okay, Ibra for the people that use the intellect. Now, the purpose we see, we see from this verse that the purpose of Allah SWT relating to us stories in the Quran is so that we may gain some form of Ibra. So, again, Allah SWT, in, this few ver- in these few verses that we have recited and we heard, Allah SWT relates to us the story of Habil Qabil. And most of us ha- already know this story, right? So, we don't want to go too much into it. But we just derive a few Ibarat, okay, a few Ibar. Uh, from these from these verses, so we can achieve the purpose of the stories in itself. The first point, to be honest, this point I wasn't planning to mention, uh, but obviously I've, uh, I've arrived and seen that the majority of the attendees to this uh, gathering, to this Tarawih Salah, is uh, our sisters. Um, nevertheless, so uh, there's this point that came to mind that the verses before the ones that we recited today were in regards to another story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he asked his people, Banu Israel, to march forward and liberate a, a land which was being run and which was being governed by a, tyr- a tyrannical group of people. Now these people, in response, they gave a very cowardice response. They challenged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even and they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, you and your Lord go and fight. What a terrible response to give. What a cowardice response to give. And it's not, it's not at all a response that any believer should give. And in this story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights the harm and the destruction that falls upon the earth when people don't stand against tyranny and against harm. In this story of um, Habil and Qabil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he highlights the opposite, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights the opposite to create a balance. That when arms are lifted, when somebody harms somebody else for a wrong purpose, what destruction that causes. So, from this we understand that there's a balance that our deen teaches. That when something is done, it has to be done at the right time. And when it shouldn't be done, it should well, it will cause the adverse effect, right? And this is something, this is something that we find that the deen teaches us across all aspects of life. Not just in this aspect of jihad and, you know, uh, lifting one's arms and something like that. But in every aspect of life. So, another, and another common example that we find in hadith uh, that highlights this point of balance is, let's say, for example, when it comes to entertaining guests and hosting guests, right? The Prophet Sallallahu he encourages the guests to do their best in terms of entertaining them, in terms of providing food for them, giving them the best food that they can cater and everything. And that is the responsibility of, let's say for example, the hosts. And as for the guests, it's their responsibility, it's their part and it's their role to be grateful, to be a good host and you know, not to cause inconvenience, not to complain about the food at all. So this is something that the deen teaches us, balancing every aspect of it. And this is what our deen is. We have made you a moderate, the middle, the middle nation in everything, moderation. Okay, so this is one point of benefit that we gain from the verses. I'm just going to put time on so I don't go over time, inshallah. Um, then another point that I thought I would put forward, and without mentioning the entire story, of um, Habil and Qabri, I would, I would assume everyone knows this story. So the story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he puts forward this story as وَاتْلُوا عَلِيْ بْنَا بَالْأَبْنِي آدَمَ بِالْحَقِّ إِذْ قَرَّبَا قُرْبَانًا فَتُقُبِّلَ مِنْ أَحَدِي مَا وَلَمْ يُتَقَبَّلَ مِنْ آخر. Now this is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the cause of this terrible act at the end of the story, that Habil gets murdered by his brother Qabil, okay? Now what was the cause of this? Now Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, their father, our father, he instructed both of his sons to present a sacrifice to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, 
Now, Habil, he presented his sacrifice. It was a good lamb, one of his best lambs, and he presented it, and it got taken by the fire. And that was a sign that his, his sacrifice was accepted. Whereas Habil, he put forward his, his, uh, his offering, and it was, like, it was among the worst of his crops, and Allah SWT did not accept that. Meaning the fire did not take that, hence Allah SWT did not accept it. And now Habil, or sorry, Qabil was infuriated. He said, how can this be? How can Qabil, how come Qabil's one got accepted, oh, sorry, Habil's one got accepted, and my one did it? What is this? What's happening here? What internal illness is this? <coughs> what internal illness is developing within Qabil that led him to this final act of, you know, uh, uh, of, of murder? What was it? Jealousy. It was jealousy. And jealousy, this is something that we find among many stories, well, <laughs> some of the greatest stories of destruction that we find within the Quran, they have this common theme that everything starts from jealousy, jealousy. right? And it's something, it's one of the key tricks and one of the key weapons of shaitan, key tactics of shaitan to make son of Adam, make us, Banu, Banu Adam, go against one another and cause hatred amongst ourselves. What other major stories in the Quran do we find that this element, this, this major illness, this disgusting illness is found which leads to a very detrimental ending for whoever had this illness? Yes. Abraha. Abraha, yes, that's a very good one. I didn't even think of, think of that one. And that led to his destruction, not just his destruction, but the destruction of his people as well. Yeah, the people of the elephants, right? What else? I mean, even bigger story, which is mentioned multiple times in the Quran, which is even before Adam Ali, well, before Adam Ali started to coming to this earth. Yes, Iblis, yes. It started off initially as, you know what? Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving so much honor to him? Why, why are the angels told to? Do you salute to him for? I have respect to not, not, not to me. Like I've, I've struggled and strived so much. I've attained so much respect from being amongst the jinn. I've been brought to the, do brought to be the teacher of the angels. Like give me some respect. Come on, ana khairun min. Kharaktani min nar wa kharaktahu min tiin. Give me some. Why is he getting so much respect? Jealousy, you see. And then that was compounded by kibr and arrogance. And look what that led him to, to be, to be certain to, uh, to, to be. Sure to be dis uh, destroyed forever and ever, okay? And another story, okay? Another major story, and this story we've already touched upon, or we we've already hinted towards right at the beginning. The story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, to be, uh, to be quick, inshallah. The story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Yeah, his brothers, what happened? They wanted to kill him as well, but they ended up leaving him the well. But this all started from what? This all spurred on from jealousy. jealousy. Now, inshallah, we'll conclude on this. There's many, many points of benefit that we can take from the verses that we recited, but we're still in the first verse. But well, inshallah, let's, let's complete this first verse properly, at least take some benefits, take some ibar from these verses. So, remember, Allah SWT doesn't tell us these stories so that we enjoy them, and we, we, we hear them as bedtime stories, and we go, we go to sleep, you know, having heard something nice, something that, you know, soothes us to sleep. But no, so that we take lessons. And if, the, if it's a story of destruction, story of evil, is it so that we become that? No, it's so that we can avoid that, isn't it? And if it's a story of good, then inshallah, how we can embrace it? This is a story of destruction, so we try to learn how we can avoid these things. So oh, this story of destruction started from where? It all erupted from jealousy. jealousy. Now, let's discuss quickly <coughs> how... If jealousy is something that can happen naturally. It's not something that you seek out. It's not something that you wake up in the morning and say to yourself, today I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be jealous of Ustad Mahmoud because he's got amazing red amama on and I want something like that. I don't, I don't wake up thinking that I'm going to be jealous like that, am I? Right? It's something that occurs naturally. So if that occurs in my heart naturally, how can I remedy that jealousy? What are ways to remedy this illness of the heart? Open question. Mu'awidat. Yes, mu'awidat. Okay? Now this is especially for the person who has hassled against him, who has envy against him, okay? If somebody feels that on a daily basis, every single one of us, we should be reading after every salah at least, or if not at least morning and evening, reading ideally all, all of the quotes, but these especially, these protect us from these things. But if you're suffering from being jealous of somebody else, what can we do to remedy that? Yes, that's a very powerful one actually. So if you're feeling jealous of somebody else, the ulama, they advise that make dua for that person. When you make dua for somebody else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places within you love for that person and slowly but surely, any form of ill feelings for that person, it goes away, okay? So that's one thing that you should do. Another thing to quickly wrap up as well is that jealousy usually occurs because you feel that you deserve that and not that other person. Yeah. So one way, one way to overcome that is to remember Qadr. A major part of our Iman, one of, us, one of the six articles of faith. 
to remember that, you know what, this person is written for him and he wasn't written for me. And third lesson, and we find within this story as well, when Qabil, when he confronted his brother and say, he said that, you know, you know, he's infuriated and he said, how could this be that, you know, you have this and I don't, I will kill you. Yeah, Habil, he gave a very beautiful answer and it was an answer that should have shook Qabil and put him into his realization that, you know what, there's a reason why he got accepted from me. Habib said to him, Inna ma yataqabbal Allah min al-muttaqeen. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only accepts from those who have taqwa, who are good conscious, who are righteous, right? So, a point that we can learn from here as well, there's many points to derive uh, from, from, this, from, this, uh, from this one statement of Habib in itself. But one point in respect of jealousy is that if you feel that you deserve something and you haven't got it, well, re-evaluate the situation. Why do you think that you deserve it and not that person? What have you not done that hasn't led you to get that thing but has led that person to do it and that would make you realize that you know what maybe i'm not actually i'm not i'm not actually uh eligible i'm not actually entitled for that blessing but that person is and this is how i can work towards it that person has done this i can also do this as well okay